Hello, I'm Gary Lilienthal, and I'm here today to discuss with you some of the modern applications in political propaganda of the ancient Greek rhetoric. Let's call this talk Spin and Doublespeak, the rotation of the master tropes. And by the way, as I begin, I want to tell you that I'm aware that many people have counseled their children to lift up their words and find the meanings underneath. This is especially required when we are assaulted by professional propagandists. In the corporate media, for example, using rhetoric against us. But what is rhetoric? Rhetoric is technically defined as the art of using language either to persuade or to influence other people. It is the body of rules a speaker or writer had to follow for expression with maximal eloquence. This meant rhetoric was, on the one hand, the ability to create an event, and on the other hand, a mandatory code requiring obedience. Now we understand what rhetoric is, but what is a trope? A trope is part of rhetoric. A trope is the conversion of a word or phrase from its proper meaning to another in order to increase its force. The word trope derives from the Greek tropos, meaning turn. Thus, a trope turns the sound of a word from one meaning to another. This happens all the time between languages. For example, the English word chu sounds like the Chinese word chu, which means eat. Next, let's look at some examples and definitions of the tropes. Let's start with the four master tropes, the first of which is metaphor. Metaphor is a trope in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not really applicable. Let me give you some examples. Care and protection, that's a metaphor. It indicates genocide through child removal from the group. Here's another one. We don't own the land, the land owns us. That's a metaphor for dispossession. Deaths in custody. That's a legal metaphor for state-sanctioned killings. Little children are sacred. Yes, they are. But the report, the little children are sacred, was used as the basis of the Northern Territory military intervention. Here's another one. Laughter is the best medicine. And we know that laughter is not medicine. She is just a late bloomer, as if she were a flower. Is there a black sheep in your family, as if members of your family were mere sheep? His heart of stone surprised me. We know that heart is flesh and it can't be stone. I smell success in this building. He's buried in a sea of paperwork. There is a heavy weight on my shoulder. Time is money. What is time? Once we understand what time is, only then can we see whether or whether or not it is money. But let me assure you, time is certainly not money. The second of the master tropes is metonymy. You may, have not, may not have heard of that before. Metonymy is a trope substituting the name of an attribute for that of the thing meant. For example, suit for business executive or the turf for horse racing. Let's look at some more examples. The metonymy uh, used in the word the crown for the attribute of power of a king or queen. The White House referring to the attribute of American administration. Dish to refer to the food arrangement on an entire plate of food. The Pentagon, you've all heard about the Pentagon. It's a big, big building just outside of Washington, D.C. It's a metonymy for the American Department of Defense and the offices of the United States Armed Forces. We also see this in ancient Egypt, 
where Egyptian gods were actually the names of government departments. Here's another one. Pen for written persuasion. Sword for military force. Hollywood for the physical site of movie studios in Los Angeles. Although I must tell you that when I lived in Los Angeles, I noticed that the biggest movie studios were not in Hollywood, they were in Culver City, which is many miles away, many kilometers away. Here's another one, hand for someone's action. This is my hand, but the metonymy hand indicates somebody has acted, such as acting with a dead hand. Now let's move to the third of the four master tropes, synecdoche. Interesting word, isn't it? Synecdoche. Synecdoche is a trope in which a part is made to represent the whole or vice versa, as in Australia lost by six wickets, meaning the Australian cricket team. They say Australia instead of the Australian cricket team. Here's another one. Boots on the ground describes soldiers. New wheels describes a new car. Ask for her hand, describes the asking of a woman to marry. Now we're all familiar with holding a woman's hand and only in a very small number of cases does holding her hand mean you're marrying her. But it, that's the way the synecdoche works. Suits, S-U-I-T-S, describes business people. She or he is a suit. Plastic describes credit cards. Are you going to play with your plastic? Pay with your plastic? That's a synecdoche. Canberra describes statements made by officials within the Australian government. Canberra said today, and you don't know who the faceless person is who's actually doing the same. Now the fourth and final Master trope is irony, and it's so important because this is how people are controlled using rhetoric. Irony is the expression of meaning by using language that normally signifies the opposite, typically for emphatic effect. Some examples, land improvement equals land clearing, which leads to scorched earth policy, a military issue, uh, ecocide and monoculture. Sustainable diversion limits, that's water theft by irrigators. Bringing them home, home is into the colonial system. The Uluru, Uluru statement, now statement from the heart, leads to assimilation and disempowerment. A fire station burns down, that's irony. A marriage counsellor files for divorce. That's another case of irony, isn't it? The police station gets robbed. A post on Facebook complains about how useless Facebook is. So you can see that in irony, the fact that it's the reverse of the original meaning can be used in rhetoric to get something uh, communicated to people so that they will agree to the reverse of what they think they are agreeing to. Here's another one. A traffic cop gets his license suspended because of unpaid parking tickets. We see these kinds of articles all the time in the news. A pilot, an aircraft pilot, suffers a fear of heights. So this explains in definitional form the four master tropes. First, metaphor. Second, metonymy. Third, synecdoche. And fourth, irony. Next, we'll see how they work together. That's up next. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about the rhetoric of the rotational metaphor. Whoa, what does that mean? Very simply put, it means the four master, master tropes turn from one to the other in a circular rotational pattern and you get the rhetoric of the rotational metaphor, starting with a metaphor and ending with irony where people have been uh, confused. So one of the most striking 
and least examined aspects of this four trope series, the four master tropes of G.M. Battista Vico in the 1660s and Kenneth Burke in the 1940s, is their inherent movement through a fixed course from metaphor, the preliminary naming operation, to metonymy, the process of formalization, to the descriptive relationships of synecdoche, to the final awareness within the series that all of its processes have been tropic turns. The whole process turning out to be ironic, the opposite of what people expected. What do I mean? Well, this is actually a corruption of Plato's rotational metaphor, his original rotational metaphor, expressed in his seventh letter. This seventh letter explains the development of knowledge, starting with name, definition, description, then the emotional satisfaction of knowledge. So you can see now how the seventh letter has been turned into a device for creating incorrect knowledge. Let's look at some examples. It is this precise order of the four trope system which constitutes in a suitably developed form, the narrativity of the human mind. We develop from facts that we perceive a narrative in our mind. It creates a narrative within our minds that we act on. We see this level of public programming, for example in the phrase, rolling out the vaccine. It sets up the public unconscious mind to accept the onset of a rotational metaphor. This is all very deliberate in public propaganda. Thus, an orator, a person skilled in public oratory, public speech, might make a general statement, a metaphor, and the audience themselves might consequently and necessarily synthesize an ironic outcome. For example, getting the jab in your arm results in de facto media advocacy of vaccine hesitancy because the public mind associates the jab or being hit with a jousting pole with being injured rather than being vaccinated. None of us knows the real truth on this topic. Turns out that the word jab actually means getting hit by a, jou a jousting pole. Also, the phrase, turn back the boats, is grounded in the idea of human traffickers being terrible people who should be stopped and jailed if possible. But the ironic result is that innocent civilians are confronted on the high seas and often drowned during this military confrontation. While the so-called human trafficker might only be a 19-year-old Indonesian small boat captain merely carrying out an agreement to ferry people to another place. This is a modern version of the ancient ferry driver who ferries the passengers across the river, in the ancient myth it's the river Styx, in exchange for the payment of a silver coin. But in this case, there is a serious violation of the Geneva Conventions on War that provides that military actions must not be carried out against non-combatant civilians. You see how war criminals can act under statutory authorization and nobody seems to worry. The most egregious example I can think of is the idea of protecting people where the protector has the power to seize their bodies into custody, inspect their bodies, and fence them in so they can't escape from protection. Finally, the very idea of an imported religion, imported from the other side of the world, must be some kind of suspicious event. The use of the metaphor of father and son to create a deified control system for workers is a particularly wrongful use of the inherent deceit of rhetoric to reduce people into servitude as sheep following the shepherd. See the ultimate irony? I look forward to explaining this process 
in detail and demonstrating to you how it works by deceptively thwarting the natural powers of reasoning inherent in all good and decent people.